Hey guys, this is Jeff from Enoch Paintball. I've been shipping out the programmers and um, wanted to do a little how-to video. This is about try 17 of making this video, so bear with me. Um, Brad's been doing a lot of testing on the programmers, so vote of confidence if Brad can do it, so can you. So, um, these are the programmers. They are a standard Arduino programmer. It's a USB ISP or a USB ASP. This is the main programmer. Ribbon cable. A 10 pin to 6 pin adapter and then a male to female pin adapter that comes out. Okay. You'll use this for the LCD boards. If you have the A1 boards, just take this out and put it aside because the connectors on the boards are different. I'm going to try to standardize those later on, but for now they're different. Okay. On the ribbon, on the adapter, there is some text that says USB ISP. We're going to reference that side as the way to know which way to plug it in. If you plug this into your board and it doesn't light up, you got it backwards. It won't damage it, but that's how you know whether it's plugged in correctly. Okay? So the very first thing we're going to do is open up a browser and go to the Enoch Paintball website. We're going to go under Support to Firmware. And click on the firmware, and that's going to take us to the firmware download page. I'm going to put some additional instructions here on how to actually do this. But for now, this is the download. As we add further um, code revisions, they'll show up here, and they'll just be 103, 104, 105, version 2.0, whatever comes out. And um, but you'll always be able to access the old versions and each of the downloads actually will have every version we've ever released. So you just need to grab the newest one. So I'm going to download that. I'm going to cut it out to the desktop. And I'm going to paste it right there and then I'm going to unzip it. It's a zip file and we'll have a folder. OK, you can put it anywhere you want on your computer. Uh, yes, this is Windows only. Sorry if you guys have a Mac. Um, for Mac support, go borrow a Windows computer. So I'm going to open up the zip file, and you'll see the flasher for Enoch. In there, there's a couple folders. There's some support software, the actual flashing program, and the actual firmware. So in the firmware, there's firmware for A1, and LCD, I'm going to get rid of that file. You don't need it. There's flashing programs for A1 and LCD. And then there's the support files. This is actually the drivers for the programmer. I tried to make it super simple. So the very first thing we're going to do is go into the support folder and run the driver program. This will launch, hopefully. And you'll see a little dialog. All we have to do is pick the, using these arrows here, the libUSB Win32 driver. And in the notes, it's going to tell you exactly which driver to use with a screenshot. Okay, And I'm going to hit install. You notice I don't have anything plugged in. I didn't install the pro, uh, plug in the programmer, anything. We can install the drivers ahead of time. So I'm just going to hit install. It's going to say installing driver, and it's going to say installed successfully. That's it. Your drivers are installed. Okay. I can close all that, and I never have to do that ever again. I'm going to plug the USB end of the programmer into my computer. Okay, and the uh, programmer will light up. You heard that little ding new device sound. And it should be ready to go. Okay, now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to disconnect it for a second so I can show you. For the LCD boards, I'm going to plug the pins 
into the programming port, which is just below the Bluetooth module connection. You'll notice that the Bluetooth module is removed. You cannot plug the programmer in with the Bluetooth module in. So with your board powered off, remove the Bluetooth module, and then we're going to plug in the programmer. The text that I said earlier that says USB ISP on it, that's going to face out. So when I plug that into the board, see if you can see that, okay? Cable's here. The text that says USB is on the outside of the board, okay? So when I plug the USB connector into my computer, the USB programmer will power up and the board will actually power up. I didn't turn the battery on on the board. It's actually better to leave it off. Um, and you'll see the voltage is zero because it's reading battery voltage and because I don't have the battery on, we're getting zero volts. Okay. So now I have a board that's powered on. My drivers are installed. So all I have to do is go into the flash folder. I'm flashing an LCD board and I'm going to choose the latest one, the highest revision, which is the 103 at the moment. I'm going to double click it. <sighs> and my computer tried to block the software because of semantic, which I hate. But I'm going to double click it. It's going to run, or you got to allow it, and it's going to start flashing. And I'm actually writing to the board right now. So it, um, you can see in the code that it checked the device. It said it was ready to accept ex instructions by reading from the chip. And then it's writing the firmware, firmware. And then it's going to verify that it wrote the firmware properly. And I think 28 seconds to write and another 20 seconds or so, 16 seconds to read is pretty darn good. So in less than a minute, we have flashed the firmware on this board. It says Fuse is OK. Done. Thank you. Press any key to continue. Press a key. It goes away. You're done. Your board is flashed to the latest revision. That is it. You are done. OK? I'm going to disconnect it, which powers off the board, and you are good to go. Like I said, for the A1 board on the programmer, I'm going to remove the male to female gender changer, and I'm going to plug in the, so that the word USB ISP on the adapter is up. So on the LCD board, it's out. On the A1 board, it's up. So you can see the text, or you probably can't see, but the text is on this side toward the board. Okay, on the LCD, it's out. I'm going to plug this one in. My board's going to power up. And instead of doing the LCD flash, I'm going to do the A1 flash. And do the latest version. It's going to try to block it. I'm going to run it. And it's running. And now we're flashing an A1 board. If you screw up and flash an LCD to an A1 or an A1 to an LCD, it will do no harm. It won't work, but it won't harm the board in any way. Uh, the only differences in the code really are some defaults and the fact that the A1 has the navigation switch and the LCD uses the buttons and the trigger for the three inputs. So it's going to be very difficult to do button level inputs when it thinks you have a different style button. But you won't harm the board. If that happens, just reflash it with the correct code. Okay, that's it. Done. A1's done. We have successfully flashed two boards in this video. And that is it. I hope this is helpful. I'm going to um, post some written instructions with some screenshots and some pictures as well to hopefully make this a little easier.